text look like? I cannot make a description about a phone, yeah, right? Right or wrong? Yes or Excellent question. So we don't we don't say Quran is written by any human being. We don't say this. We say Quran is the word of God. You understand? Word of God. Yeah. It came to the Prophet Muhammad through angels. You understand? Jibrail alayhi salam. So it came to the Prophet Muhammad as I said that he didn't know how to write and how to read. You understand? So if you don't know how to write and how to read, and two years later someone says, "What's your name, sir?" Uh, you asked for my name. Yeah. Just Lucy. Lucy. Okay, yeah. Lucy. So, for example, Lucy, you don't know how to read or how to write. So, if someone come tomorrow and say, "Okay, Lucy, read, a, write a research paper," I don't believe that, right? Because you don't know how to read and how to write. Do you understand? So, Prophet Muhammad Sallam didn't know how to how to read or how to write. He was unlettered. You understand? It's a historical truth. It's a historic truth. Then the point is how he can say something and how he, he comes with a book which talks about the past, which talks about in that time, the, in, in the time of Prophet Muhammad Islam, which talks about the future. And this Quran talks about the embryology, this Quran talks about science, this Quran talks about history, this Quran talks about the oceanography and other things. Do you understand? Yeah, it's like magic book. Not uh, magic book. We say miracle. Uh, miracle. We say, yeah, we say miracle from the God. Do you understand? It's the mu'jaza. Mu'jaza means the miracle. How do we understand? Where is the book? I, I want to see it. Yeah, okay, alright. I'll give you a book. I'll give you a Quran. Yeah, yeah. I have a Quran. So I'll give it to you for free. No worries. This Quran. Yeah? I'll give you. Yeah, you have one. All right then. So I'll give uh, another, some other literature. So, now you asked, how do you know these books is real, right? Okay. So first of all, as I said, there's Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi didn't know how to write or how to read. So it's impossible for someone who doesn't know how to write and how to read and comes with a book which is, you know, com comes with miracle. Yeah. Second thing is this: the Allah make a challenge in Quran. In the Quran, Allah made challenge. What's the challenge? Allah said, if you don't believe this book comes from God, what you can do, you can create something like it. That's the challenge from Allah, the creator. Yeah. So Allah said, if you don't believe it's a book from Allah, it's a book from your creator, create something like it. He gave you a challenge. What if we create something wrong or what yeah. if we create something wrong, then how do we know it's wrong or right? Okay, that's, that's fine. But the first of all, wrong and right will, dis will de define will be defined by the God. Because He is the ultimate... How, how ultimate yeah, I, I'll come to this point. Yeah. So we are in a point when God says, God gives a challenge to the whole humanity about... Let's say, if you, if you don't think this book comes from God, create something like it. And this was very risky. This challenge is very risky. For example, in that time, there is num just few numbers of people are Muslim. Yeah. And in that time, the Arab was, you know, their most intellectual person in their history. Uh, sorry, in their language. And if you if you read the Arab history, there's that they were the in that time they were most and precise people who can wrote the thousands of lives of poems. They memorized thousands of lives of, uh, lives of poems, you see? But in that time, giving such challenge will put your religion in risk. Because you know you are giving the special people a challenge to make something like it, and they are special on it. Then what happened? Arab took this challenge and they didn't able to make anything like it. And Allah said, don't, I'm, Allah said it then, they create something like it, if you don't, create some something like a verse a chapter surah it's called surah yeah create, create a surah if you can but they didn't able to handle this challenge you see so first of all quran says allah gives the challenge if you don't believe you can look into it and create something like it then nobody till today able to create something like it do you understand the second is the allah said in the quran that he will preserve the quran yeah so, do you know which language uh, 
محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سبيك عربي عربي يا سو الله سيد هي ويل بريزيرف ذا قران ان ذيس بوك ويل بي بريزيرف اف يو هاف ا لوك ات اذر ريليجيوس بوكس فور اكزامبل بايبل God never said in Bible that He will preserve the Bible, but God said in the Quran He will preserve Quran. Let's have a look whether Quran is preserved or not. So, if you have a look at other scripture past, this Bible has changed many times. You see, we, for example, we have the NIV, KJV. Catholic Bible is different than Protestant Bible. Protestant Bible is different than others Bible. You see, there is many version of Bible. But we don't have any version of the Quran. For example, go to the Jesus. He spoke in Aramaic. His disciple was speaking in Aramaic, and he preached the Bible, the Torah, in Jil in Aramaic. Sorry, Torah in Jil in Aramaic. Yeah. But we don't find any Aramaic Bible at all. You see, it has changed. It has lost. Look at the Quran. What Quran is saying? Allah is saying He will preserve the Quran. So how it was preserved? First of all, it was transmitted and preserved in oral tradition. Yeah. So how it was? Then when Quran revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, is be upon him from the God, he recited the Quran in front of the group of Sahaba, meaning his companion. In front of the group of companions, he recited the Quran. And there were the group of companions who called Katibi Ohi. They were the Ohi writer. Meaning the writer of the Quran. When Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him recite the Quran, they hear it, then they wrote it, then they repeat after the Prophet Muhammad Islam. So it was preserved and well written. First of all, then they memorize the whole Quran. You see. So once they memorize the whole Quran, they call half as a Quran. Half as a Quran means he preserved the whole Quran in his heart. Do you understand? So once he is half as a Quran. He got the sonnet certificate to teach the Quran with other students. So he teach the Quran to other students, and they teach their student, they teach their student, they teach their student. So full Quran from first word to last word is preserved. It never changed. For example, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke in Arabic, right? Quran was written in Arabic. The disciple was speaking in Arabic. Arabic. Which language Quran do you have today? Arabic, you see. So we recite in Quran in Arabic. We recite the Quran in our prayer in Arabic. We still memorize the Quran in Arabic. Every every Muslim knows how to, you know, verses from the Quran in Arabic. You see, so Quran is Arabic and it it's preserved. So we see the second step. What Allah says, He will preserve the Quran and it's still preserved. Even if someone burn the whole Quran in this world, the whole printed Quran. We don't have any issues in terms of preservation because we already preserved the Quran on our heart. You will never find anyone in the whole planet for other books who memorize the whole whole books. You see, only the Quran. Which, yeah, you see. And the Quran, we spoke about God's challenge. We spoke about Quranic preservation. How God says He will preserve the Quran, and we spoke about. Let's speak about something Quran says. Yeah. Some prediction Quran made. For example, Quran gives some historical, you know, explanation of previous history. For example, Quran talks about many prophets which came, who came before, about the Lut alayhi salam, about Ibrahim alayhi salam, all of the all of the prophets. And Quran speaks something about the future as well. So at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, Quran talks about. Uh, some prediction. Quran makes some prediction in terms of Roman Empire. Yeah, in that time, Roman was the biggest empire in the world. They are the most strongest. And what Quran says in that time? Quran says Roman will be defeated by Persians. Wow, wow, that that's amazing. You see, and people were crazy. People became crazy. They said, "Oh, what you you see? Islam is lie because Roman." These people are the strongest in in this world. For example, if I say there's Nepal will defeat USA, you will laugh, right? So in their time, Quran is saying Roman Empire will be defeated by Persians, and 
all of the munafiqun and kafirun, you know, non-believer, they were laughing at Quran and saying, laughing at Prophet Muhammad and saying, oh, that's the point we can see Quran is false. Then what happened? Within few years, Roman Empire was defeated by Persians. And then Quran says, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm coming to this. And Quran says, Roman will take over Persians again. They will defeat Persians again after nine years. Quran says, and it was happened actually exactly like this. You see? So if Quran doesn't come from Allah, the Creator, who knows it? Yes, the Roman will be defeated by someone which has less power. No one can imagine it, but it did happen. You see? Going back to again the Quranic, Quranic prediction and Quranic miracles. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Quran talks about, for example, how fetus develop in mother's womb, yeah? yeah, womb of a mother, pregnant women, yeah. So we know this modern embryology, approximately 1985 to 1990. In that time, we know the modern embryology, how fetus work, how it become blastocysts, how meiosis cell, cell division happen in uh, in a womb of a mother. But amazingly. Quran talks 1500 years ago about this. 1500 years ago. We got the you know information about Jaigut. Jaigut means when the you know sperm and ov ovum become come together, ovary to come together, then it makes Zaigut. So we got the information about Zaigut maximum 100 years ago. Maximum. If you go this, maximum 100 years ago. But Quran talks about alaqa. Alaqa means when it comes together, sperm and the, you know, when it come together, it's called alaqa. And mudga. Mudga means that when it's uh, become the fetus. Yeah? You see? Quran talks about this in 1500 years ago. How anyone, the, like the Prophet Muhammad, who doesn't know how to write, how to read, how he knows it, how he knew it, you see? 1500 years ago. How we knew it? We just know it on just uh, you know 60 years ago, 70 years ago, 100 years ago. Before that, we didn't know. You see, an orbit of sun. Yeah, we just mm, discovered it 100 years ago. The sun has its own orbits. Moon has its own orbits. But Quran says, "Washamsu tajri li mustaqarri laha, zalika taqdiru al-aziz al-alim." The sun has its own or orbits and it's regulated by Allah. You see. 1500 years ago so how how is possible like someone Muhammad Islam he didn't know how to write he didn't know how to read and he's saying something like this you understand why it's come from God and Quran and Prophet Muhammad Islam spoke something about make some prediction by himself as well so for example Prophet Muhammad Islam said the Bedouin Arab Bedouin will compete each other to make the tallest building. Yeah. You see? But it was kind of impossible things for Arab Bedouin in that time. He says in future, Arab Bedouin will compete each other to make the tallest building. What about the pyramids? Yeah, I'm coming yeah. to this as well. Okay, is this the Quran or the Hadith? Uh, hadith. It's Hadith. hadith yeah. yeah, it's Hadith. Yeah. So in Hadith, Prophet Muhammad said they will compete each other to make the tallest building. Look at the video or any picture of Dubai 70 years ago. They were just desert. These people were very poor. And 1500 years ago, what Prophet Muhammad Islam said, that they will compete each other to make the tallest building. And what is the tallest building right now in the world? Burj, Burj Khalifa in Dubai. You see? Yes, yes. So in that time, Prophet Muhammad Islam predicted and how a person can predict these actual factual thing without having knowledge from God? Uh, did he make any, anything about uh, China's development, like uh, space war? Yeah, so there is a, there, there is a hadith in Kitabul Fitan. There's the at end of this end time of this war. There's the you know power will went to the Chinese area. This area of of this war. Is that written on board? Sorry? Is that written on board? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's in Kitabul Fitan, it's in Hadith. It's, it's in it's Hadith. It's from your creation or it's 
written uh, paper or it's rich, it's uh, hadith is preserved it's in pres uh, it's written in kitabul fitan as well he speaks about the how world will end and there will be war between you know muslims and non muslims at the ghazwatul hind there will be ghazwatul hind as well so he speaks about the future as well you see how the impossible things happen by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam yeah so do you understand this why quran is preserved and why it's from god yeah. does it make sense to you yeah, yeah. does it make sense the why yeah, prophet yeah. muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last on the final messenger and he said the quran confirmed with this the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger from god yeah and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this ana khatamun nabiyyin la nabiyya ba'da meaning i am the last prophet and there will be no prophet after me and we believe he is the last prophet and he came with guidance this quran and we spoke about the quran how quran is preserved how quran has its miracle how quran talks about previous life how quran talks about life after death how quran talks about you know history how quran talks about science so we will find the quran we will find our guidance how to lead our life how to lead our financial system how to lead our family life how to lead, lead our life as a father as a you know husband as a kids every everything we have the full guidance in the quran that's the reason we believe this quran is come from god do you understand yeah. any question on this yeah. it's clear this book, yeah so does it make sense to you now there's the yeah. there is one god and prophet muhammad is the messenger of god so why was writing this yeah because for example that's fine good good yeah yeah so for example <coughs> if you know me yeah and you see me this i'm going to cross the red light in traffic will you stop me uh, yeah yeah why dangerous. exactly it's dangerous i will fall in accident yeah maybe i'll my I, i'll i'll be dead so we believe and we say the things we discuss it makes sense to us and allah said in the quran this quran doesn't have any confusion and quran is saying that the if you don't believe in god if you die without believing god you will face the severe punishment and as we know this this is the from this quran is from allah the creator who created everything and he is the owner of the universe so he knows everything about us and he is telling us okay you have life after death you will face severe punishment or you will get the ultimate greatness ultimate happiness and that's the reason we believe this is true book and we try to as like he will stop me to go to red light so we are trying to give people this message that there is a life after death and you have a creator who created you the prophet muhammad islam is the last and the final messenger you need to subscribe it because it is the truth you understand it does it make sense to you that there is a one creator and prophet muhammad islam is the last and the final messenger does it make sense so if you believe in one god and if you subscribe there is a the prophet muhammad islam is the last and the final messenger you are muslim you know so if you say it in arabic you can become muslim what do you think do you want to say it in arabic this i believe in one god and prophet muhammad islam is the last and the final messenger do you want to say it in arabic if you say it in arabic you can become muslim then you can practice your you know you have relation with god directly not any with any human like that jesus going to the church and saying father forgive me no you have direct connection with your creator who created you do you understand this so if you have direct connection with your creator if you commit any sin any mistakes you can say yeah god oh my god i i make mistake forgive me allah will forgive you you see and once you take shahada meaning once you accept islam saying i believe in one god and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last and the final messenger your all sin previous mistakes and sin will be forgiven automatically yeah you will be like a newborn baby do you understand what do you think does it make sense yeah do you understand it in arabic that's i believe in one god and prophet muhammad is the last and the final messenger yeah what should i do okay i will say it repeat after me yeah so once you say it you will become muslim and inshallah then you will practice step, step by step do you understand so say ashhadu allah ilaha illa allah wa ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah i bear witness english i bear witness yeah there is no god except allah and prophet muhammad and prophet muhammad 
is the last and final messenger final messenger of Allah mashallah you become Muslim you see alhamdulillah rabbil alameen you see you become Muslim now so once you become Muslim you have some other duties for example praying five times yeah you step by step you learn step by step how to pray how to do this how to pray you know how to make the taharat how to become clean you know so we'll do step by step uh, I can give you number of some sisters they can teach you how to do the step by step do you want to take the number so yeah we have uh, the our circle in white chapel there is a new muslim circle yeah so I heard that Muslim uh, uh, don't eat pork. No, we, we don't eat pork. Yeah. yeah. So as a Muslim, like, like you become Muslim, yeah. so you have some boundary that you can't eat pork, you can't eat alcohol, you can't take alcohol, yeah. you can't drink this kind of stuff. Because Islam is, you know, full food of life. Yeah. It will affect your body. Yeah, it will affect your hygiene as well. So Islam doesn't allow it. Uh, yeah. So write it. I think yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So her name is Fatima. Okay. IAP. So they will teach uh, every Saturday. They will teach you how to write the, how to you know, pray, how to pray five times, how to do all the stuffs as Muslima. Yeah. Then inshallah, you learn the best. Just call her or message her. That says that I got your number from Nazmul. I just new Muslim. I want to join your circle. Yeah. Inshallah, they will they will help you. Yeah. All right then. So inshallah Aziz and as you become Muslim there is other pillars of Islam you just open your door you see and you have the we have five pillars is kalima you, you took the iman already the belief you have and salah meaning prayer five times prayer in a day zakah when you have you know certain amount of money you need to give zakah as well there is a text like this and then you have uh, you know hajj one time in your whole life you need to go to uh, Saudi yeah, Kaaba to do the Hajj and uh, fasting in at, in Ramadan so in, in the month of Ramadan we do fast for a month yeah inshallah as Muslim you will do step by step inshallah yeah, yeah. all right then if you have any do you have any other question uh, would you no? please recommend some restaurants a restaurant yeah uh, in, the in in this area uh, yeah it's some, it's some restaurant. okay so if you go to Edgewa Road yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there is some restaurant, yeah, Syrian restaurant, Arab restaurant. You can take halal food, inshallah. Yeah. That way? Yeah, that way. If you go that way, then you, you can find it. Yeah, all right? Yeah, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, you become Muslim. You see? We can say, Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaykum. We say, peace be upon you yeah, from the God. You see? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, you start a new journey. Keep learning, and inshallah, Allah will help you. Inshallah? All right, then. Inshallah. And keep contact with this sister. Yeah, they will help you yeah. to understand him. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Yeah. No problem. Take care. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. This sister just accepts Shahada. Alhamdulillah. May Allah keep her in faith and may Allah, uh, you know, accept, accept her as Muslimah. May Allah forgive our sin. May Allah forgive all of us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.